This lesson is on the research process. So what is research? Research is essentially investigation and examination, and it's something that we do every day. Whether we've received an assignment that calls for it in our classes, or whether it's something that we have to do personally. Um, an example of personal research would be you have to buy a new car. And researching what type of car you're going to buy, if you're going to buy a new or used, where you're going to buy it from. Um, so research is something that factors heavily into our everyday lives, even when we leave the academic realm. Um, it's a process, and it's a process that requires time and flexibility. Um, but it's also something that becomes easier with practice. So the more you do research and the more you practice this process, the easier it becomes and the more it's second nature to you. Like I mentioned, research is a process, and that's how we're going to kind of look at it. Um, there are three steps in this process. Now, if you were to Google the research process, you would pull hundreds of different types of processes with hundreds of different types of steps. I've looked at several of those and kind of condensed them down into three steps for you. We have defining the topic, devising the strategy, and searching. Defining a topic is actually a process in itself. Um, you start at the top when you receive a research assignment in a class or you understand that a personal decision is required. Your next step from that is to select a topic. Sometimes you might not have this step if your topic has already been decided for you in your research assignment or obviously you're going to know um, what your topic is if it's a personal decision. Um, you then need to explore and narrow your topic. Um, a lot of times your topics, especially for us class assignments, can be extremely broad and they're too broad to do the type of research that you need to do. So explore, get some background information on your topic and then begin to narrow it down. Finally, once you've done that, you can state a question and begin to formulate your thesis, which is something you should be familiar with uh, from prior English classes. Um, tips when choosing topics. Um, avoid the tired and often used topics. Abortion, legal drinking age, and smoking are just three examples of those. Um, take the unexpected or unpopular side of an argument. Um, if you are going to write about an old topic or one of those tired and often used topics, try to do it in a new way, something perhaps your teacher hasn't heard of before. Um, and then you can use CQ Researcher and Opposing Viewpoints in Context to help you find topic ideas um, that might be centered around recent topics. And a lot of your 101 research papers, English 101 research papers, and your persuasive speeches um, and Speech 107 require recent topics. So CQ Researcher and Opposing Viewpoints in Context are two databases that can help. Alright, the next step is devising a strategy. And this is something that we've talked about prior to this lesson, um, you need to identify the terminology that you're going to search by. So what terms are you going to use? Um, what search strings are you going to use? Are you What Boolean operators do you think that you can use to kind of connect your search terms? Um, remember that you should always have as many terms as phrases as possible um, so that you pull as much information that is as relevant as possible. Keep in mind that if you have a topic, something like drunk driving, that there are multiple ways of saying that um, and you need to think of all those ways when you're identifying your terminology. Um, and then the second part of devising your strategy is once you know what you're going to search by, determine where you're going to search. Um, and always follow CORE, C-O-R-R, -R, which is searching the catalog, then the online resources, and then reference works. And then lastly in the process is searching. Um, and this is where you implement your search strategy that you devised in step two uh, to find your sources. And then also where you read and evaluate your sources. And we've talked um, prior to this lesson about how to evaluate sources effectively.